Hello everyone. Welcome to Thursday edition of Take 5. I'm ending now this series that we've been doing on my reflections of India and my time there for over the many, many years. When I think about the, the beautiful country of India and uh, so many friends and beautiful people there. The re and the reason I'm thinking about it, A, is I'm, I haven't been there in almost two years, maybe a year and a half. And the reason I haven't been there is because the news is so hard there. Uh, COVID is worse in India right now than it has been in any place in the world. And if, again, if you would read my emails, uh, I get a daily list of prayer requests from my friends over there and from the ministries over there. If you would read the, the news, it's hard to hear. It's hard to read. It's, it's very painful. And now on top of that, I don't know if you watch the news, um, right now they are in cyclone season. And so in the last couple of weeks, uh, two very, very intense cyclones have been in the news that are coming down um, on that poor country. And so as I reflect, I'm going to end this time now, as I reflect on my friends in India, the, the, the passage of scripture that comes to my mind comes from Romans chapter 8 about um, creation is groaning. And in a sense, that's what we are seeing. Creation is growing, groaning, I'm sorry. And it's not meant to be this way. When you hear of the pain, when you hear of the suffering, when you hear of cyclones and tornadoes, that's not the way it was meant to be. I mean, everything in nature it wears down and dies. Nature is in a, in a constant stage of pain and suffering. Um, India for sure, but our lives as well. Our bodies break down. Um, that's just the, the way things are now. And creation is growing. Let me, let me read to you from the Apostle Paul, Romans chapter 8. He begins by saying this, and I'll get there, when he says, I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is going to be revealed. Now, what sufferings of this present time is he talking about? Here's what he says. For the, for the creation was subject to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subject, subjected it in hope, that the creation itself will one day be set free from the bondage to decay into the glorious freedom of God's children. One day... All of that groaning, all of the pain will be set free in creation. Tornadoes and COVID and cyclones. And yet he says this, For we know that the whole creation has been groaning together with labor pains like childbirth until now. Not only that, but we ourselves who have the Spirit are the first fruits. We also groan within ourselves eagerly awaiting for the redemption of our bodies. What is he saying? He is saying that the, the creation, with all of its pain, with all of its uh, COVID disease, with its cyclones, with the, the whole cycle of life and death, all of that are, are like childbirth. Think about childbirth for a minute. Um, those labor pains will not last forever. The, the pains are real. The pains are excruciating. Um, you read the news and you know that it is. But there is hope. What does he say? The creation self will be set free from the bondage to decay into the glorious freedom of God's children. Eventually, those labor pains will bring forth life. Eventually, this frustration will bring forth fulfillment. And that fulfillment is what keeps us going, is what gives us hope. And I think of that even for my, my friends in India. Ultimately, God's fulfillment, the glorious future is there. That's why Paul can say, I consider the sufferings of this present time not worth comparing with the glory that is going to be revealed to us. The future glory, believe in it, trust in it, know Christ in it will outweigh the present suffering. That's what I think of when I think of my friends in India. And their pain is real. That's why I said when we first started this whole thing, if you want to help in their, in their COVID relief, just go to dfnusa.org and you'll see it right there. And if you want to 
to give more than thoughts and prayers. If you want to actually help, I would encourage you to do so. To do so. And I, I promise you that your our help will go to a really good cause as this ministry seeks to bring the love and the comfort of Christ in very tangible ways. Well, anyway, I thank you for allowing me to go down memory lane of with my friends in India and the life lessons I've learned from being there. I hope one day I can return again. Know this, that the present sufferings that we are experiencing are incomparable to the future glory that Christ has promised for us. His resurrection is proof of that. I'll see you next week when we begin a new series. So long.